Is your current router slow, insecure, and maybe even a bit outdated? Well, don't worry, because we're gonna ditch it for something newer, faster, way more secure, and a whole lot more fun. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about PFSense. PFSense is an open source router and firewall software that gives you enterprise level security. And the best part, this software is completely free. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your home network with the latest version of PFSense, and we'll get everything nice and secure. And at the end of the video, we'll install a VPN to the router so you can browse the web safely and privately. I'm Michael Scott, and not the one from the office. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. Let's get started. So what exactly makes PFSense so powerful? Here's where things get really cool. PFSense doesn't just protect your network, it gives you enterprise level tools that most consumer routers can't even dream of. This includes Stateful Firewall, which tracks the state of every incoming and outgoing connection. It also has intrusion detection and prevention, which means you can install Snort directly to PFSense, which will allow you to monitor, detect, and block malicious activity. You also get PF Blocker NG, that lets you block ads in entire countries and even malicious IP ranges. PFSense also comes with VPN encryption and DNS over TLS and a whole bunch more. To get started with PFSense, you'll need a compatible hardware setup, commonly called a firewall appliance. This typically includes a dedicated machine or a virtual machine with at least two networking interfaces, one for the WAN and one for the LAN. This PFSense installation will show the dedicated machine setup. Additionally, you're gonna need a USB drive to create a bootable installation media. And you'll also need a stable internet connection to download the software and updates. And you should have some basic networking knowledge, but don't worry, PFSense offers a user-friendly interface for most configurations. And it's super easy, and I'll guide you through the entire process. I promise. Before we go any further, let's talk about the firewall appliance. Hardware choices for the PFSense router are abundant, so just pick something you can afford. And prices can range from $70 all the way up to $400. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to run PFSense. If your budget is around $100, then this little guy will do the trick. It's got four gigs of RAM, a 64 gig SATA SSD, and two networking interfaces. And I'll have the product link listed below. I spent $210 on this router, and it has 8 gigs of RAM and a 128 gig SSD, more than enough to run PFSense. And it has four ports on the back, which is plenty. You'll also need a monitor and a keyboard to access the appliance for the initial installation. After initial installation, we can access PFSense through the web UI via the network on a connected desktop computer. All right, the first step is to download the PFSense software, and we'll have the link listed down below. Just make sure to download the memory stick version. Next, insert the USB into your computer, then download Belina Etcher or Rufus. These programs will flash the USB with a PFSense file. Belina Etcher and Rufus are both free, and I'll have their links listed below. And by the way, I use Belina Etcher and it works perfectly. So first thing, hit flash from file, and now you want to select the PFSense file that you just downloaded, then select target, and then watch it flash the USB. Now it's done and we're ready to go to the hardware appliance. All right, so first thing you wanna do is plug in your monitor, your keyboard, and then go ahead and plug in the USB drive. Then you wanna plug the power into the appliance and then turn it on. And from here, it will automatically start up the setup process. Easy. So just let it go and we're gonna follow a few quick steps. First thing we're gonna do is say no to the VLANs. We're not gonna do that right now. And then next, we're gonna assign the WAN port and the LAN port. And for this installation, we only need two ports. Before you assign your WAN port and LAN port, make sure you connect the modem to your router, and then make sure you connect the LAN port to your desktop computer. The modem to the router will be the WAN port, and the remainder of the ports will be LAN ports. All right, we'll plug in the WAN port, and we'll plug in the LAN port. and the LAN port is connected to the desktop computer. Then now go ahead and assign the WAN port and the LAN port, and make sure to take notice of the names on these ports when you assign them. So I'm typing in IGC0, which matches up with the ETH0 on the back of the router. And this is our WAN port. And for the LAN port, I'm typing in IGC1, and this matches up the ETH1. 
So now PFSense will automatically assign IP addresses to those ports. So our IP address for the WAN port is 192.168.1.119. And the LAN port IP address is 192.168.1.1. When we go to our desktop computer, we'll type in 192.168.1.1 to access the PFSense web UI. If you're into networking, you probably noticed my WAN IP is a private IP and not a public IP. This is because my router is connected to my current network and not connected directly to my modem. And this is because my modem is not in my YouTube studio. So for filming purposes, I couldn't connect directly to my modem. However, once filming is finished, I will set up my PFSense router in my network panel. And my current configuration right now causes a double NAT situation, which means I have two routers performing NAT at the same time. To avoid a double NAT situation like this, always connect directly to your modem. And if you have two routers in your network, the second router should be set to bridge mode. This will avoid the double NAT situation. And you always want your firewall directly after the modem for the best security practices. So there's one operation that PFSense does not perform, and that's your wireless network. But don't worry, we got you covered. Remember that slow, insecure, and outdated router? Well, we can repurpose it as an access point. Simply set the router to AP mode, then connect the router to your PFSense firewall appliance using an ethernet cable from the LAN port on the back of the wireless router to any LAN port on the back of the firewall appliance. If your PFSense firewall appliance only has two networking interface ports, you can always connect a switch to the PFSense router for more ports. A second option for your wireless network is to install a dedicated wireless access point. And in my network, I have two wireless access points and both are connected to PoE switches. This means the PoE switch will power these access points. So if you decide to install a switch into your network, consider getting a PoE switch. They're great for access points, security cameras, and ring doorbells. Now that PFSense is all set up, let's get on the web UI and have some fun. Okay, now we're at my favorite part of the video, the setup process. So type in 192.168.1.1 into any browser on your desktop computer. And from here, you'll see your connection is not <laughs> private. But don't worry, because we're connected to our PFSense router, and our connection is safe. So click Advanced and proceed to 192.168.1.1. And from here, you'll be at the PFSense login screen. Now type in Admin for username and PFSense for password, all lowercase. Now we're at the PFSense setup wizard. Let's have some fun. So the first page is the Welcome to PFSense software homepage. Go ahead and click Next. This page talks about the NetGate global support. Go ahead and click Next. All right, now we're finally at the fun part. So for host name, you can put whatever you want. I like my PFSense. We'll go with that. Next, we have the domain name. You can leave it the way it is or change it. Mine is pfsense.local. Next is primary and secondary DNS server. For primary, we're going to do Cloudflare, and Cloudflare is very secure. And for secondary DNS, we're going to put in Quad9, which is also very secure. Now you want to uncheck the override DNS, and then hit Next. And now we're at the time server information page. So time server host name, we're going to go ahead and leave it the same. Now below, pick your time zone. And I'm in Las Vegas, so we're U.S. Pacific time zone. Hit Next. Now we're at the Configure WAN interface page. So for this page, we're going to leave everything the same, including DHCP. Now go down to the bottom and click Next. Okay, now we're at the Configure LAN interface page. And our first big change will be right here. 192.168.1.1 is way too common. It's probably the most common IP address on the planet. So we're going to change it to 10.10.10.1, which is not as common. But you can change it to any private IP address you want, or just leave it the way it is. It's up to you. OK, click Next. And now we're at the Set Admin Password page. So go ahead and change your password and hit Next. OK, now because we changed our private IP address, we'll need to reload the page and reboot the firewall appliance. And now we'll type in our browser, 10.10.10.1. And once again, it says the connection is not private. Go ahead and go to Advanced and proceed to 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 
and we're back at the login screen. Then type in admin and your new password. Okay, now we're back in. Go ahead and hit accept and then close. So at this point, you can see everything is up and running. And what's really cool about this home screen, at the top, there's a red plus button where you can add widgets to your screen. This makes your PFSense home screen totally customizable. You can add or remove widgets whenever you want. Okay, our final setup is to add a VPN to this router. And for me, this is the best part of the video because our entire network will now be encrypted over a VPN. Incredible. And this means every device in your network is encrypted. And we're talking about smartphones, TVs, laptops, gaming consoles, streaming boxes, or whatever is connected to your network. Awesome. For this setup, we're gonna install PIA, Private Internet Access. I've used PIA for almost 10 years now. And PIA will cost you between two and three dollars per month depending on the plan. All right, after you sign up for PIA, you'll have a username and password. The username will start with a P and then a bunch of numbers. So go ahead and sign into the website. And then you wanna look for the PFSense 2.6.0 OpenVPN setup, and then select default to download the certification files. And don't worry, I'll have a link to this page listed below. Once we extract the file, we're gonna see all the certifications and there's a bunch. So which one do we pick? Well, each file is labeled with a region. So look for the closest region to where you live. I live in Las Vegas, and I'll pick the Las Vegas region. Easy. So now you want to open the file. You can use Word or Notepad, whatever you want to use. This file contains the certification and other important information you'll need to install PIA to PFSense. So keep it handy. So now let's go back to the PFSense main menu, and then we'll go to System and then Certificate. From here, we're going to add the PIA certificate. Okay, go ahead and click on Add. Now, Description Name. Name it whatever you want. I'll name it PIA VPN. Next, you want to change the method from Create to Import. And now it's time to add the certification. So go back to the file we just opened in Word or Notepad and look for certification. And you want to copy and paste the entire certification. So copy and paste from begin certificate to end certificate. So once you copy and pasted that, go ahead and hit save. And if you did it correctly, it'll look just like this. Everything looks really good. So now it's time to configure OpenVPN. So up top, go to VPN and then go to OpenVPN. And now click on clients and then click on add. We're gonna add a VPN client. All right, this is where the VPN magic happens. In the description box, name it whatever you want. Our next change or setting change is server host or address. So in that file, look for a location address. And you can see it right here. We're gonna copy and paste it into the address field. Easy. The next change is server port. It should be 1198, not 1194. So go ahead and make that change. Easy. Next, go to user authentication settings. And here you'll type in your PIA username and password. Next, uncheck mark the TLS configuration. And under peer certificate authority, it should contain the name of the certification you created earlier. All right, now let's move on to data encryption algorithms. So once again, go back to the file to the right and look for the word cipher, and take note of the name. You want to match that name to the data encryption algorithms on the right, and you want to remove the ones that do not match. To remove them, simply click on them and they're gone. Now back to the left side, we're gonna add this one, the AES-128-CBC. Now under fallback data encryption algorithm, go ahead and choose the AES-128-CBC. Okay, the next change is auth digest algorithm. Once again, refer back to the file and make sure it matches up correctly. And our file says SHA-1, so we'll pick that. All right, next is tunnel settings, and we're gonna skip that. All right, let's go down to advanced configurations. In custom options, we're gonna copy and paste. I'll have the copy and paste information in the description below. 
Okay, we're almost done. One more change to make. Under Gateway Creation, select IPv4 only, and then hit Save. And bam, shazam, we're all good. So now we're going to check the status of our VPN. So go to Status and select Open VPN. And kaboom, we're all good. It says Connected and Success. But hold on, we're not quite ready yet. We do have private internet access connected, and our router is a client of it, but our traffic isn't going across it. So how do we fix this? Well, no worries, we got you covered. So let's go to the Interfaces tab and select Assignments. So from here, you can see the WAM port and the LAM port. And from here, we're going to assign a new interface. So look for Available Network Ports. Then in the drop-down menu, select our new PIA interface. And then click Add. And one more thing, we have to enable the port, and we're going to rename it too. So click on Opt1, check mark Enable, and then we can rename it to whatever we want, and then hit Save. And then click on Apply Changes. Let's see if everything is working. And yes, everything is working perfectly. Our PFSense router is fully set up, and our PIA VPN is fully set up as well. If you want full control of all your data on your network, and you want maximum security, then a PFSense router is an excellent choice. In this video, I only cover the basics, and there is a plethora of things you can do with this router. But don't worry, I'll be making more videos on PFSense real soon. And with that, guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And for God's sakes, smash the bell icon. It's completely free. And I'll see you real soon. Peace.